Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation. My name is Sam Andrews. You've seen me with Hank on many videos making holsters. One of the most common questions we get from people who want to do holsters on their own is how to make the patterns. And that was the thing that took me the longest to learn when I was starting out, because if your pattern isn't right, nothing else is going to turn out properly. Well, I found a few quick and easy shortcuts that should help you save a lot of time off trying it for yourself. So we're going to demonstrate that today. For belt holsters, there's two basic kinds. Pancake holsters, what we call saddle styles, and scabbard holsters. The pancakes, two pieces, one on top of the other. The saddle, or the scabbard style, is the old classic holster where the leather's bent around and sewn up the back. So I'll show you first a simple way of getting your proportions correct for the pancake style. This confuses a lot of people because you have a larger piece of leather on the outside smaller inside to create that pocket for the gun to be in. And they don't know how wide to make it. There's one really easy method. If you trace the weapon that you're going to be using, I like the manila folders because they're stiffer than regular paper and just easier to manipulate. Keeping your weapon there, take a strip of the weight of leather that you're going to make the holster out of. In that case, this is 7-8 ounce. Good weight for this type of holster. Put the leather over the weapon, bend it down until it's touching on the paper, make a mark, bring it around the other side and repeat that. And this is going to give you the width of your stitching lines for the pocket on the front of the holster. Now, you've got wide and skinny, so you'll need to do a couple. So this shows me that the top of my holster, between the stitch lines, for the slide trigger guard area, has to have this separation, whereas over the lower slide and barrel is narrower separation. I can then apply that to the paper. Actually, I should have slid it a little more over there, get it even on each side. And this is the basis for fitting it. You'll then just draw in where it's going to follow the shape of the gun. From here, you can make basically any holster shape that you like. You can bring the top up in a curve. You could cut it straight across. Whatever pleases you as far as design goes. You can then make your side skirts where there's going to be slots for the belt. I'm not doing anything very exact here because it's kind of tough to freehand it. In whatever proportion that you like, that gives you your holster face. To get to the back part of the holster, which is going to be narrower, you have to cut this out because we're going to be using it as a model. And as I said, this is not very pretty or exact, but the principle remains the same, and you can always work on the artistic part once you have the proportions down. Now we're back to tracing the weapon on what is going to be the back of the holster. In this case, you want to bring the stitching line out 
just a little bit from the outline of the weapon. That's about three sixteenths of an inch. I just did it by eyeball, but I've been doing it a long time. Maybe a little more there. I need to make that line longer so I can see it at the bottom. This front stitching line, line up with the line parallel to the weapon, trace that part of the holster. Now we're going to just bunch this up and align the rear lines, which again I didn't extend far enough to see. I'm so used to doing this, actually explaining it, <laughs> it's very hard. Then I'm lining up these lines, top and bottom. Trace the rear edge. Again, make whatever shape pleases you for the top of your holster. And this gives you your front and back. This would have to be flipped over when you're cutting it, of course, because you want the smooth side out on front and back. But now you've got the base and the cover. And when it's all sewn together, and also given the elasticity of the wet leather when we mold it, you'll have one that will fit the weapon. The second type of holster, which is the more classic scabbard holster, is just the shaped tube, if you will, that the gun sits down in, and they're made by bending the leather around and sewing the back shut. Very common on big revolvers, that sort of thing. So with the same principle as we used before, trace the weapon. Finding my center line that I will bend the pattern on. This is a little more guesswork because I have to leave enough room. You're going to bend it over, and it comes from lots of doing it. But depending on the size and the thickness of the weapon, you would go greater or lesser. Using the same idea as we did on the other holster, take a piece of leather, the weight that you're going to use, wrap it around, so you know your gun comes to here, you're going to need at least that much extra for welts and stitching and so forth. This is going to give you with the cross. So, I bring my ends together, see where the midpoint is, and that tells me my outer edge should be here, here on the back side. Now you can draw in the shape of whatever you want your holster to look like. You can follow the lines of the weapon. You can come down in a curve. Whatever pleases you. And again, on the top, you can make it any shape that you please. Once you cut this side out, I then take the pen and I score that center line hard using the ruler bend it over and trace it, and that will give me the entire body for the scabbard style holster. After that, it's just a matter of styling it the way you like it, adding a belt loop on the back, and building it. I'm going to follow the easy line here <laughs> rather than try and step it in. Once you have the front half cut out, as I said, I'm scoring that center line 
hard with the ballpoint pen so that it will bend along that line. I bend it back. I see it comes to my mark. That tells me I'm correct. Make a trace. And now you have the outline that's going to fit this size of weapon. When you get it all cut out and put together, I usually use a welt, a spacer of the same weight leather running the length of this seam. It not only opens it out a bit to let you fit the gun more easily, but it's a stronger seam than just two pieces sewn together, because that way the gun's pushing right on the stitching. This acts as a barrier. Sorry about all the rain noise in the background. It's Florida and it's summer. We, we live with it. Once you have the basic dimensions down on your trace and your measurement separations, you can then refine your pattern to however fancy you want to make it. So from that, you can come to something that finishes out like this for scabbard style. Or the pancake style. Again, I call it a saddle style, but what's in the name? Once you get all your stitch marks, lines and separations going, they come out very well. Now, in order to do these, aside from a strip of leather in whatever weight you're going to be using, you'll need manila folders, some really good sharp scissors. Um, these are ones Tandy sold that are knife edged. They cut very cleanly and they're so much nicer to use than just household scissors, which tend to leave a kind of a ragged edge on the paper. Good ballpoint and a ruler, and the weapon that you're building for, you've got everything you need. Thank you for watching this video. If there's any other techniques, questions, anything you're wondering about, you can leave comments on the video, and we'll see what we can do about answering those.